Mr. President-elect. How are you? I'm just Yesterday, I sat down with President-elect Obama in Chicago. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's thank my you. thrill. My thrill. As you prepared to lead the country, what is your biggest fear? Well, uh, there are a lot of things that keep me up at night. And one of the concerns I have is that the economy is so weakened that the next 60 days are uh, are going to be difficult because we've got uh, a president who, uh, even though he may mean well, is now sort of in lame duck status. Congress isn't in, uh, and I don't have the reins of power. So my job right now is to assemble the best possible team, put our plans in place so that on January 20th, we come out of the gates uh, with full force. But we have to make sure that in the meantime, over the next 50 some days, that we don't see uh, any further weakening in the financial markets. You have said that Americans don't expect miracles from you, but many of them indeed do. Uh, you're expected to cure the economy and to save the planet and to do it quickly. <laughs> uh, are you concerned that expectations might be too high for you? Well, look, one of the things that happened during this campaign was you saw the American people grab a hold of democracy and say this is ours and we want a government that works and and that fights for us and that expectation I think I can meet I think mm -hmm. I can meet the expectation of a government that is competent that is honest and that every single day is trying to make the lives of ordinary Americans a little bit better a lot of what's going on right now is uh, a real problem in the financial markets. A lot of what's happening is businesses are contracting, but a lot of it is also that the American people are worried and scared, and that gets into a uh, a downward spiral. And I think that what we've been able to do is to start giving some people some assurance that we're actually going to make things work for the American people. So what you're saying is, hang in there. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to the economy. We're not going to get out of the hole that we're in overnight. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. I think if people see progress, then uh, I'll be meeting expectations. But a miracle worker, you are not. I am not a miracle worker. Let's talk about the uh, U.S. automakers. Um, you said that we have to help them, but that you were disappointed that they didn't have a better uh, thought out proposal. What kind of a plan are you looking for, and what kind of money are you talking about? What we need is a plan for the automakers where if they're getting a bridge loan, it's a bridge loan to somewhere and not a bridge loan to nowhere. We don't want to pony up $10 billion or $20 billion of taxpayer money and then six months or a year from now, we're in exactly the same spot that we're in now. So get your act together. You've got to get your act together, yeah. absolutely. How did you feel when you read about the three heads of the auto little... companies taking private planes to Washington? Well, I thought Congress. maybe they're a little tone deaf to what's happening in America right now. Uh, and. Uh, this has been a chronic problem, not just for the auto industry, I mean, we were uh, sort of focused on them, but I think it's been a problem for uh, the captains of industry generally. Uh, when people are pulling down $100, billion, $100 million bonuses on Wall Street uh, and taking enormous risks with other people's money, that indicates a sense that you don't have any perspective on what's happening to ordinary Americans. And one of the things I hope my presidency helps to usher in is a, a return to an ethic of responsibility. That if you're placed in a position of power, then you've got responsibilities to your workers. Should bank executives, it's almost Christmas time, forego their bonuses? I think they should. Uh, that's an example of taking responsibility. I think that if you are already worth tens of millions of dollars, and you are having to lay off workers, the least you can do is say, I'm willing to make some sacrifice as well, because I recognize that there are people who are a lot less well off who are going through some pretty tough times. Banks have already been promised $700 billion. You said that Main Street is as important as the banks, as Wall Street. But are you talking about perhaps spending another $700 billion to help Main Street, and if so, how do you do that? Well, uh, there are a range of ways that we could design uh, programs that help uh, banks and homeowners 
renegotiate the mortgages that they're currently in that may not be sustainable. People just can't make their mortgage payments, but they want to make their mortgage payments. But are you going to allocate another 500 or 700 billion, or will it come out of that original 700? Well, uh, I'm not president yet, so I don't know yet how much more of the money uh, is going to be spent. I'm going to scrutinize very carefully how that money is spent. If the Bush administration chooses to draw down that money, then I'm going to have something to say about whether it's doing it wisely. During the campaign, there was a central and consistent theme of yours to raise taxes on people earning over $250,000 a year. Now it seems there's a little waffling on that. When are you going to do it? Oh, it's not waffling at all. Keep in mind what the theme was. The theme was a net tax cut. Yeah. That we were going to cut taxes for 95% of working families. What I also said was in order to restore some balance to the tax code and also to pay for some of those tax cuts for 95% of Americans, people like you and me, Barbara, can afford to pay a little bit more. And we are going to make sure that happens. Uh, there is a question as to whether we do it through a actual repeal, uh, which would make it happen about a year faster, or whether we just let uh, the tax cuts lapse. And that's what my economic team is there for. That's why they're doing planning to determine what the best way to accomplish this is. Are there sacrifices that Americans as individuals can do? Yes. Uh, the first thing, I think, is for the American people to draw on that reservoir of, of confidence and uh, stick to itness and perseverance that my grandparents uh, had during much tougher times during the Great Depression. The second thing, each of us have a role to play in not being wasteful when it comes to energy. Uh, for us to turn off the lights when we leave the house, to uh, make sure that we're unplugging the chargers that we use on our cell phones. You talk about light bulbs and so forth. When you're in the White House, uh, are you going to green the White House? Are you going to turn off the light bulbs, tell the kids to turn, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things I want to do is, is uh, to, I, I've already met the, uh, the chief usher there, the wonderful man, uh, 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 former admiral uh, of the Coast Guard. And one of the things I want to do is to, uh, sit down with him and let's do an evaluation. How are we using energy in the White House? Part of what I want to do is to show the American people that it's not that hard. Are I mean, you going to tiptoe around at night and turn out the lights? Uh, well, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be <laughs> obsessive about it, but I do that in my current house. So there's no reason why I wouldn't do it in my next one. When we come back, racist threats and what keeps the president-elect from being afraid. Uh, I have a, a deep religious faith uh, and uh, a faith in, in people that uh, you know, carries me through the day.